Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. You know, right right down the street from me, there's a beautiful statue of my boyhood hero, Duke Kahanamoku. He was a, a surfer. He brought surfing to the world. He helped revive the sport, and uh, he's an w- Olympic gold medalist. But he lives by a creed. His creed is, I greet each person with aloha. That's what I believe, and that is my creed. He lives by a creed. Uh, my question is, do you live by a personal creed? We have the Apostles' Creed, you know, of our faith. But what, what, is a, what would be a one- or two-sentence creed that you would live by? I know in our ministry, our creed is that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. That's the creed uh, I, I live by. Uh, there, I could have probably had a lot of different ways to summarize my life, but in me, that, to me, that's a whole lot of stuff all in just that one creed. The question is, do you live by a creed? Uh, take some time. Uh, and, and and think about it, and write down in one sentence how you how you will live your life. Uh, and you know, for me, the greatest way to live is, is abandoned to God's will. You know, when my son Jeremiah was towed into an 85 foot surf, and he let go of that tow rope, he had to be towed in by a jet ski because he couldn't catch that wave on his surfboard by paddling in because it was just too big and too fast. Once he let go of that of that. Uh, that tow rope, and he dropped down the face of that 85-foot wave. Um, believe me, he was abandoned to that wave, and he had to ride over a mile and a half to uh, to to just to outrun that wave because you you ride down along the face of the wave as it's peeling along. And he ended up uh, in the very end having to Superman through about an eight-foot lip that was throwing over the top of him where, when he was in a tube. That's what I mean by abandonment to God's will: total abandonment. And you do that by paddling in, and you paddle in by having that really powerful prayer life and just saying, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. My desk over there has the name. I stole it from what the White House is. The the president's desk is called the Resolute Desk. And I have a plaque on my corner of my desk that says, the Resolute Desk, thy will be done. That enough enough would be a creed. So think about what is your creed. We have with us today, today... Deacon Harold Burke Sivers, just about every time I'm recording a series of shows, I invite him. He's, he's often very busy, but he, he, he so often says yes uh, to being on our show. So, Deacon, aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank you, Bear. It's always great to be with you, and uh, um, you're living in Hawaii full-time now. I'm jealous. Yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> hey, you know we're gonna have a we're gonna have a retreat here December seventh through the eleventh. So people should come, bring their keiki, bring their ohana because it's it's gonna we have gonna have special men's time, but we're also having it just for everyone, uh, the husbands and wives and everyone to come. And there will be a place where we're gonna do it outside on the beach, so people can kind of watch their keiki out there in the water. Maybe take turns watching their, each other's children while we have our retreat. So uh, yeah, so we're gonna invite people to come back to come to the islands and recreate and recreate but deacon I, I i love your i love your teaching gift and your gift of exhortation but the the substance of that the basis of that is your is your commitment to to uh to daily adoration yeah yeah you know it is if uh i usually try, try to go to adoration obviously for an hour um at a parish um, but but daily, I try to sp- spend time every single day in silence and listening to God, because that's that's where God speaks to you in the silence of your heart. You can't hear God with all the noise and distractions uh, that happen every day. We have to find time for silence, you know, um, and, and this is the year of St. Joseph. right? So, so what I'd like to say, we enter the silence of Joseph. What do I mean by that? Well, Joseph, of course, has no spoken lines in all the scriptures. There's no quotes from Joseph anywhere yeah. in the entire Bible. But his actions spoke louder than his words. So he was silent uh, in the sense he didn't say anything, but his actions spoke louder than his words. And that's the same thing is true for us. If we enter into that silence of Joseph, um, where we just kind of sit back and, and listen 
to God's voice and allow that voice to change our life. Uh, uh, like I said, ride the wave, if you will, right, uh, with, with the Lord and not be afraid to jump on there with him. You know, there are going to be sharks in the water. You know, sometimes I like to watch Shark Week. Shark Week. Yeah, on, on, on I hate to watch that show. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> they have the surfers uh, hitting yeah. the, the board. But, you know, but we, we don't have to be afraid because Christ is with us. Christ is on that board with us. And the way we come to understand is something my will or is it God's will is entering into that silence because that's where God speaks. With, and, and that's where God convicts you because sometimes you might think, I really don't want to do this. But God is saying, yeah, actually, you do need to do it. You know? Yeah. Uh, kind of like Gideon. Yeah. You know, when he went oh, I love to Gideon. Gideon. Yeah. And, 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 and Gideon, I need you to do this. Uh, you, you sure? I'm the, least, <laughs> I'm the least of the least of the tribes. You sure yeah. with me? And yeah. then he tested them, right, uh, with the fleece and all of that. And, and we can be like that sometimes, but we have to take courage and take heart and, uh, and trust in the Lord. You know, it's so cool. I've been, I was out at Boise State Salt and Light Radio the other the last couple of weeks ago doing their gay list for them. And we had cigar nights with the men and stuff like that. But but when you talk to radio people, Deacon, almost without exception, when you talk to the people that kind of that started the radio station, because it takes boots on the ground to do radio. You can do TV from a satellite, but you got to have an antenna and you got to have fundraising and people involved to do radio. And you'll ask them so what was your background in radio? And they'll go, well, nothing. <laughs> well, nothing, nothing, right? Yeah, so, did, but God nudged him on the show, on the yeah. on the back like he did. Gideon said, well, hey, you got a minute? And then he made the mistake. People make the mistake of saying, yeah, yes, Lord, is that you? Yeah, I want you to start a radio station. What? <laughs> yeah, someone from the uh, uh, Catholic radio station came to one of my talks very early on when I first started speaking and invited me to be on the radio. And, of course, I had no idea about radio, how it worked, what to do. Um, but they, they liked what I was saying and it turned into a little 30 minute uh, show called Faith and Life. Uh, it's connecting your faith to your everyday life. And then um, someone from Catholic Answers heard that program and then invited me to be a Catholic Answers Live and they kind of kind of grew from there. You know, so I've been on radio ever since. Yeah, so it's, it's so interesting how it's just that nudge of the Holy Spirit. And then you look at Gideon, and God said, hey, I want you to go do this. And Gideon says, all right. Okay, so gather the men together. And then all these men gather. And he goes, hmm, that's too many. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They'll think they did it. So anyone who, who's got a sick sick person at home or doesn't or is afraid, go. And then he whittles it down, whittles it down the, the number again. And then there, it's like, oh, that's still too many. And then he had them test the, the way they would drink the water. And it ended up Gideon had 300 men. That's what we see today in the church. I think we see, in a sense, a shrinking down of the church, but a more powerful church, as St. Benedict said. And, and don't look around you and go, where, you know, what can I do? You know, you and a band of, you, you and two or three brothers uh, who get, get together to take something on can do amazing things. And that's how we see the radio station start. That's how we see men's groups start. Uh, the Knights of Columbus has a new movement. So it's the small band of devoted uh, men. Uh, I'm speaking, of course, our ministry is to men, men and women, of course. But uh, that small group of devoted men that can, that can uh, change the world upside down. Look what 12 apostles did. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and you're right. Uh, things are shrinking. You know, um, during COVID, I obviously haven't traveled very much. It's starting to open up now. But the few places that I have been this year, it's very interesting. We're, we're seeing parishes shrinking in the sense that parishes are merging. Mm. We're seeing now clusters of, pa of parishes other, that become one parish. So instead of having three parishes, they're now one parish uh, with, with three different buildings. <laughs> right? Three right. different places of worship. And, and so we're gonna, I think we're going to continue to see that that kind of shrinkage but at the same time the holy spirit never abandons his church so as you said uh so so wonderfully bear that god uses this time not when things are, are the church may be shrinking but he's also building up apostles in the work of men the, the the work that i'm doing with the catholic men's leadership alliance along with father liar richards and, and and many others are doing tremendous work in this area and our heroic men's initiative Yes. You know, we were providing the best resources in the world for men, you know, on a, an amazing platform called Heroic Men. And so, yes. And so, and so as as things around us seem to be collapsing, the Lord is starting to build up men 
um, for a time like this. Uh, you know, and, and, and this is exactly what needs to happen in the church right now, because this is the pattern. We have strong men, strong families, strong family, strong church, strong church, strong culture. Hey Amen. We're talking with Deacon Harold Brooks Sivers. I don't think people even need to be, even though they're listening on radio, I think we know not just by the tenor of your voice, but the tenor of, of your passion that this is Deacon Harold. Um, this is the Bear Washington Adventure. We're going to be right back with more with, with Deacon Harold Burke Sivers, one of my favorite people. Uh, we'll be right back. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to deepadventure.com, you men, and uh, challenge you to join Bear's Man Cave. It's a secret face. It's not among what it is, is a secret Facebook group where men challenge and inspire each other with what they have to say. We think of it like the cave of Adullam, you know, where, where the misfits kind of all gather together at that cave and, and they formed each other and God formed them into those mighty men of valor. And so although we're a bunch of knuckle draggers and misfits, we, we, uh, we work together to challenge each other, encourage each other. We have every two weeks, we have a Zoom video, meet up with everybody. And uh, we're, we're going to be launching in the fall a school of manliness um, uh, with mentoring and things like that and uh, uh, tools for you to use in your personal journey with the Lord. So we invite you men, uh, step forward, step into the breach, and uh, become part of uh, Bear's Man Cave, uh, deepadventure.com. We're talking with Deacon Har Harold Burke Sivers, uh, and we're talking w with him about what the Lord's been whispering to him. I love the fact that you said it's in your... In your have you noticed that when you're having that time of silence with the Lord, how... Two days later, a day later, a week later, what what the a sense that you received and didn't even know you were receiving, uh, just in that quietness, some suddenly a thought that you had, it rings like a bell again and again and again in the next several days as the Lord begins to give you a direction or give you a sense of what what He's saying. You know, the yeah, time no, of silence. Yeah, exactly right. No, exactly right. And because that's sometimes how how it works. It's not like a a, a lightning bolt moment. Right where things happen, you go into adoration. You're praying for something. All of a sudden, bam! You know, right? It's not like Paul being knocked uh, knocked to the ground. But but often what it is is it's uh, like that still small voice. You know, God's not in the thunder. God's not in the earthquake. God's not in the fire or the wind. He's in that still small voice. And uh, and, and sometimes it, you know it's just like a seed that takes time for that seed to grow. The more mm. we're open, that's, it's not just a one-time thing. It's not magic. Go to adoration, all of a sudden your 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 problems are solved. No, it's over time listening, and it's because it's a conversation, it's a dialogue. We go there to listen, and then God speaks to our hearts, and then we become convicted to carry forward God's will in our life. And that's a process. Mm -hmm. It's not an, an immediate magic thing. It's a process. And and the more comfortable we are with listening, because let's be real, sometimes you get in there, all the distractions of the world and all the thoughts you have in your mind, you know, that kind of, you know, uh, fills that space. But then as you as you begin more comfortable with silence, because we're we're very uncomfortable with silence in this culture. Too. Yeah, more so than ever. Ev yeah. Every minute has to be filled with noise or television or commercials or distractions. And we're afraid of silence. But the more we enter into that silence, the more deeply God can speak to our hearts and to our lives. And so, it, yeah, it takes a little bit of practice, quite frankly, just to be comfortable being before the Lord. <laughs> you know, you know? Cindy, yeah, Cindy and I were in Glacier Park this uh, a few weeks ago and doing some hiking near where I used to have a cabin. And 
and also as a surfer, uh, being on the island of Molokai is a great example too, where it's, there's not a lot of people, or being out in the ocean. And it's really interesting, Deacon, how loud nature is. People don't even don't aren't even tuned in. They might hear a bird in the background sometimes, but they're they don't, they're not aware of the wind blowing through the uh, the cook pines that sound like a river uh, in in Molokai, or the, so, the the song of a minor bird, or in the distance a dove a dove um, out on the ocean. You know, hearing just the ripple against your surfboard, or 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 um, you know, in the mountains, there's 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 sounds there that are so loud that you just don't hear. They're in the city too. But you just don't hear them, and that's the way it is with this, uh, the voice of the Lord. The Lord is always speaking. The logos, the, the 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 word Jesus Christ is always speaking to our hearts. But and it's loud, but we but we don't hear because there's just too much noise. You know, I was out I was out golfing the other day, and I love to walk and not have any sounds on. And my son was with me, and his his friend had had his radio with him. To me, that time on the golf course is solitude. I hear the birds, I hear the wind, I'm walking by myself, and then this other person chooses to have noise and a distraction. So having that time of silence, you know, one of the things that I learned as a deacon, I mean, not as a deacon, as an oblate of the Benedictine um, monastery is to say the Jesus prayer. Uh, just saying the name of Jesus, Jesus, Lord, Jesus, Son, living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. But I've, I've shortened the Jesus prayer down a little bit. I just say Jesus. Or like Larry, Father Larry says, say the Our Father and take, what does he say? Take a half hour to pray it. One Our Father, meditating on each word. We need to slow it down, and then and then and then from that becomes this dynamo of Deacon Harold, right? <laughs> from that from that center of prayer. Well, you know, and that's the thing. Uh, uh, Johnette Benkovic asked me once when I was on uh, her show on EW10, when do you feel most like yourself? You know, and I think people expected me to say, oh, when I'm speaking in front of people, or when I'm preaching at mass or whatever. But I said, it's when I'm in adoration. Because <laughs> yeah. that's when I mostly feel like the person who God created me to be is before the Lord mm. uh, in the Blessed Sacrament. And um, it's, it's something I look forward to every single week. In fact, if I go to a parish and I'm speaking at a parish that doesn't have adoration, uh, even though I will ask the permission, the permission of the priest to expose the Blessed Sacrament you know, for an hour, you know, for anybody else who wants to attend, or I'll, I'll, I'll try to go to a nearby parish and go to adoration, because that time is just so crucial and so important. Yes, uh, I know to, that to about that you. Dialogue. It's so beautiful. I know that about you. And I know uh, uh, John Paul, St. John Paul too, it would love to, to be in the presence. And he he wrote in, in, in adoration. He wrote some of his books in, in the presence of the Eucharist. But I remember the story of him walking. He was in America and he was very, very busy. And all the bishops were saying, don't t let him know that the Eucharist is in that, that room. It was just a regular old conference room, but that's where it was. Because he'll stop and he'll throw our whole schedule off. And he walks by and he, he takes a step, he step back and he waves his finger at them. No, 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 no. No. And he went back in and he walked in that room because he knew the Eucharist was present. So, what? What? what is, let, let's make a big. Let's make a big change from there. It's not really not a change when you're in the, when you're with in the presence of the Lord, and you know God's heart. I remember once I was praying and and uh, there was that sense of Lord, let them know your love and uh, this this great joy uh, which I can't uh, uh, share uh, swept over me. But then the, the conference leader said, now, Lord, let them see your heart. And I broke into tears. And I, 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 I'd cry maybe once every 10 years. I wish I could cry more. But uh, this great uh, sweeping in my heart of God's uh, compassionate um, heart for his people. So when you're in adoration, what is the Lord telling us now? What is the Lord wanting to speak to his people because uh, there seems to be a more and more of a suffering in the church and more of a um, almost a martyrdom. People's careers are being ended because they didn't. They said, well, I can't be part of the, the, the gay pride committee. And you don't get fired, but you just kind of looked over. You're passed over for career advancement and things like that. What, what, what is the heart of the Lord? What do, you, what do you sense the Lord is saying to us right now? Well, the Lord is, I think, two things. First of all, he's saying peace, right? Uh, my peace I give to you my peace. I leave with you, not as the world gives, do I give it to you? Because the peace of God is beyond our understanding. 
right? And, and so it's it's the peace of knowing that you are following God's will. And following God's will doesn't always mean you're going to be happy. You're always going to be joyful, but you're not always going to be happy. For example, our blessed mother at the foot of the cross, um, that was in fulfillment of God's will, no question. And But she was not happy at all. Um, there was a joy um, uh, in the sense that she's seeing God's will being fulfilled, but that, that does not make her happy. And that's the thing. This world wants you to be happy. So they'll stimulate you with pornography, with drugs, with alcohol, with television, with, with all this, all these things that will never give you the peace and the tranquility and the serenity that the peace of God can give you. I think that's the first thing. And the second thing is, I think this time of COVID, um, you know, cause this is, think about it. This shut down the world. There's, there's been other kind of coronaviruses in the past, H1N1, West Nile virus, SARS, but they didn't shut the world down. So I think God is using this time. It's okay, like a spiritual stop sign. Wait a minute. Okay, stop right now. Take a deep breath and take a look at where did I come from and where am I going? Let's, okay, De- he, Deacon, he, Deacon, let's take a break right there. We got to take a hard break. So like you said, COVID was maybe the Lord said, let's take a stop. Let's take a stop right now, and we'll be back with more of the Bear <laughs> Wozniak adventure, Deacon Her- Harold Burke Sivers. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men. Yes, we mean you. Go to DeepAdventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Yesterday, or a few days ago, Cindy and I were at church, and we walked in. And there's a beautiful family there, a young family, a, a wife with, and a husband with three children, and just just so devoted in, to their children and to the Lord. But I saw sprinkled here and there uh, these women that I just admire so much, the women that are sitting alone, that have their, their, a ring on their finger. They're there early praying the rosary. They love the men in their lives. And we want to reach out to those women and let you know how much we love and appreciate you. And we're, we want to be part of the answer to your prayers for, for, the, for the men in your, in your lives. And we, and we know that our ministry kind of runs on your prayers. And so uh, of late, the Lord's spoken to me to, to I feel it was the Lord, to, to reach out to you as the mama bears. I remember when that term first came to me, the next day my son Jeremiah walked in the house and said, Hey, Dad, remember when we had that cabin in Montana and... The grizzly bears, the mama bears, how fierce they were. And I go, exactly. They don't mess with a, with a mama bear and her cubs. And so we're not talking about the sweet, cuddly mama bears. We're talking about those fierce women who are, or who are prayer warriors that are praying for their families. And, uh, and, and we want to thank you. So you can go to deepadventure.com and click on join the mama bears. And we have someone gave us these. There's 40 of these teddy, teddy bear, Catholic biker teddy bears. <laughs> so if you... Uh, if you um, if you see it on YouTube, you can see what I'm pointing at. But if you join up, we have some of these. We can send those to you. Send those to you too. We have with us Deacon Harold Burke Sivers, and we're talking about this this deep breath that the whole world seemed to take uh, in, when when this whole COVID thing came. And it's almost like it's the world's going different directions now as a result of it. Some people are going deeper with God and, and others it's just kind of derailed us into seeing government as our God and our provider. I'm just wondering, Deacon, what, what lessons did you learn going through the, the corona? What yeah. did the Lord speak to you? Yeah, like I said um, uh, before the break, it's kind of like a spiritual stop sign, right? So when you're driving your car, you get to a stop sign, you stop, you look left and you look right. And I think this was a spiritual stop sign in a sense we 
we stop to see, okay, where did I come from? How am I living in accordance with God's will right now? Am I doing things in my life? Am I praying the way I should be? Am I am I close to God? Or what's separating me from God? To really ponder that, and also to to look right. Where am I going? Where am I heading? Am I on the path to eternal life? Jesus says the road to heaven is narrow and very few will find it. Am I on the narrow road or am I on, am I on the wide road to destruction? You know, right. I mean, there's a really time to discern. And so you're right, Bear, things have gone in kind of two directions. There's been people that entered this time of introspection, uh, this time of deeper prayer and intimacy with the Lord. And there's others that use this time to divide, right, to, to bring division. So. Uh, for example, even in families, spouses that haven't uh, talked to each other for a long time because like th they were separated because everybody was so busy doing their own thing. And now everybody's at home, <laughs> you know, so now you have to sometimes you bring up things that you either didn't want to bring up and stuff. But now, you know, and, and it causes tension within the family, not being able to go to mass, you know, and, and, and what that's done for many people, because I've, I've talked to a lot of people about this, and I, I know the bishops didn't deliberately do this, but the effect of not having access to the Eucharist and to other sacraments, but particularly the Eucharist, people grew up saying, you have to go to church. The Eucharist is important. And the perception that they have is, well, I guess the Eucharist isn't important. If I could just watch Mass in my slippers holding a cup of coffee, you know, watching on the Internet, I guess I don't. I mean, it, see, I, again, it wasn't anything deliberate. But I think that's the effect that it's had on a number of people. It, yes. And, and so we definitely have challenges today to try to overcome that. And, so, and it had the opposite effect, too. But for some reason, Deacon, when you said sitting on the couch wearing your, your slippers, I just didn't want to imagine you doing that wearing, wearing house <laughs> slippers. <laughs> well, but fortunately, no. I was still able to go to, uh, to Mass because uh, we were live streaming. So at the worst of it, Father and I were the only ones there. Um, and the video people were up in the choir loft, and Father and I were the only ones there. Um, so, for well, you know, example, I'm distanced and stuff, but uh, for, so I'm blessed. And, and, I, and the deacon represents the people at Mass. So, in a sense, I was representing all the people that could not be at Mass, you know, in, in that sense, serving as the deacon. Well, the other, other thing is, like, uh, uh, I would hear in our beautiful, we love our Protestant brothers and sisters, we love them. And we as Catholics have to, we as Christians need to stick together. But I would hear them say, well, you can worship the Lord. Like there's a, I was in Waco, Texas recently, and there's a church that meets under an overpass. And it has a dynamic ministry. It's very interesting. But you can worship the Lord in the ocean. You can go to the mountains. You can worship the Lord anywhere. And that is true. But what's uniquely true about Catholics is you can, can you you know, the, the centricity at the summit of our faith is the Eucharist. And we can't go, you know, we, it, it, for some of us, it really taught us how precious the Eucharist is when we were denied it. And we, we stood out, the, you, know, the, you know that the church is right next to me? I'm directly above the, the Eucharist in my condo, 25 floors down. And we wow. would go over to the church uh, uh, after I did my morning catechisms that I teach, and we, we would pray the rosary that the church doors would be open because we knew it had gotten to the point of total absurdity, you know, what was being done. But I think it had both effects, huh? It had for some people learned how precious it was, and for others it was like, well, I guess, you know, I guess not, it's not that important. It goes back to that thought that we had about how the church seems to be getting more uh, compressed is the way I would say it. I think of a Harley Davidson engine. You know, mm. the, there's fuel there, and then it's compressed, and then there's that spark, and it explodes. And I think this time of, of we see the church kind of shrinking, um, there's, it's, it's getting down to the devout, to the really determined and the really devout people. And I expect to see a spark of power of the Holy Spirit, just an explosion uh, that will mo start moving that piston, moving that engine. I was interviewing Father Jason Sharon, who's a Ukrainian Catholic priest. My, my dad was a Ukrainian Catholic. You know, it's part of the Catholic Church. Um, and he was saying how powerful and beautiful in, in the Ukraine they have too many priests. I mean, they have more than mm -hmm. enough priests. Uh, but think about the compression that they went under. But it made the people that are there more devout, more, uh, more, uh, more sincere, more desperately committed to the Lord. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really the first century church and the church of the Middle Ages all over again. 
in, in the first century when the church was expanding with Paul and the apostles were, were and, and Titus and uh, Barnabas, were all out there teaching Silas. Yeah, exactly yeah and, and and then what what the Romans and the the others tried to oppress them and tried to crush the church and shrink the church and and that's where many martyrs uh were born into born into eternal life in heaven Amen. Right? so they tried to crush it but yet it grew you know um in the middle ages the dark ages as they were called right we, we saw again the shrinking of the church and, and and but then we have amazing saints during that time right it, it always reminds me those those two eras aquinas what you were saying yeah i mean yeah exactly yeah. exactly it, it's is when the sea fall unless the sea falls and dies it cannot bear fruit <laughs> so this this comp this compacting this compressing is in a sense as a death but out of that rises new new life um because god always gives us what what we need even at the darkest age for example well, yeah go ahead <laughs> it, yeah just quickly in the um I, I think what we need now to come out of this honestly bear is a, is a uh a eucharistic renaissance you know back in the back in the 13th century pope urban the fourth commissioned uh saint thomas aquinas not only to write beautiful things about the the eucharist so for example we have that beautiful prayer after communion after you receive communion is a beautiful amazing prayer if you ever go to Legatus, they pray that they yes, pray that prayer yeah. at the end of mass yeah. right but he also wrote i love that prayer to, it's so perfectly oh, it's, written it, it's so oh perfectly. my goodness it's, it's so awesome yeah um then but he also wrote tanta mergo uh 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 panis angelicus um o salutaris you know so this and, the, and that's when eucharistic processions were starting again and the feast of corpus christi started during that time and so i think we're in another one of those times we're seeing this shrinking we're seeing this compression but it's also a time for men that we, so we see we maybe see men rising yes. up now and i also think it's time for a eucharistic um uh a eucharistic revolution you know, revolution uh, it, if we yeah. were on the same page this could be very powerful for the whole church well we got to take a quick break but I, I agree with you it's so interesting when I as I hear you talk I, I, I hear little glimpses of the liturgy of the hour of over the last couple of weeks I hear I hear the deacons devotion to to prayer and and uh, such an inspiration to us all to be invested in your prayer life and uh, and uh, and spend time with the Lord spend time meditating on his word and you uh, God's got a plan for you, so get ready. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guy, Bear Wozniak. Our third season of Long Ride Home is uh, starting up on EWTN. Uh, we're a ride with, with a pack of men across the United States, and we're busily editing season four, five, and six now, which were filmed here in Hawaii. Uh, but if you don't want to wait, you can go to deepadventure.com, become a Patreon donor. You can get all the episodes of long ride home as we edit them so you can get the director's cut sometimes a, as much as a year before it airs on EWTN so go to deepadventure.com and subscribe to our newsletter so you can see what how handsome Deacon Harold is because we send out <laughs> uh, the YouTube version of the radio show the, the Saturday morning before it airs so for those who are our subscribers Deacon Harold I was I was reading in the li in the liturgy today I know this is recorded but the writings of St. Uh, Ambrose so powerful and he said something just so, he was talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he talked about the blood of Jesus as if it was the Holy Spirit. 
you know, the, the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. And what proceeded from Jesus was the, the blood and water flowed, the birth of the church. The, but he spoke of it as, as if it was the very love, you know, which they, the early church fathers said the love between the Father and the Son is the Holy Spirit. As if the Holy Spirit was, is right there and active uh, in, 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 in our lives. And so when we see uh, this time of compression, I hear people worried about it, worried about it, worried about it, and what are we going to do, and, the, and, and all the different conspiracy theories and all that kind of stuff. And really, you guys, the Holy Spirit is large and in charge, and he, and he, and he is the expression of the God the Father and God the Son's love. And, uh, and so what do you think the Holy Spirit, I mean, do we have to be afraid of what's happening? Do we have to be worried? Do we have to become clever and contri- uh, conniving and contriving? Or what should our, 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 our thought be and what should our action be? Well, you're right. First of all, the, the catechesis that St. Ambrose is giving is absolutely beautiful. It's a mystagogical catechesis. So this is for people who have been baptized and have come into the church. And, and this is something that we need to start up again, Pope, post-baptismal catechesis. So after you come in RCIA, there's this continuing class, and you're right. So St. Ambrose is talking about the, the water, the blood, and the spirit. You have to have all three, you know, because um, it's, it's, it, all the, the blood flows from uh, the cross of Christ. Because when Longinus speared him in the side, what flowed out? Blood and water. What unites all that together is the Holy Spirit. It's kind of the super glue mm. that leads us together. Because why is the Holy Spirit important? Because Christ and the Father sent us the Holy Spirit, who draws us closer to Jesus, who moves us deeper into the Father's heart. Because Jesus says, no one comes to the Father except through me. And then once we move closer to the heart of the Father, he gives us more of the Holy Spirit, who moves us deeper into, the closer to Jesus, moves us deeper into the heart of the Father. And it's a process. Sometimes we, have, we backslide, take a few steps back, and then we move, and then we start to move forward again. But, but we should not be afraid of the Holy Spirit. Mm. We, we, in fact, we need to be afraid of anything. We need to be, in a sense, afraid of, um, uh, well, let me just put it like this. The word fear in Hebrew that, that's used most often is yare. And yare means um, uh, fear, filial fear, um, uh, uh, reverence, awe, and respect, like what you give to your parents. We say you, and so when it says fear the Lord, it means give honor, reverence, and respect to the Lord. So that's the kind of fear, not not the fear like, I'm afraid of what's going to happen in the world. Look, if you're living for Jesus, if you know that you're doing God's will, you're uh, walking in the way of the Lord, um, you got nothing to fear. If if a meteorite falls and crushes the earth, I I, I know where I'm going. I give you a good example. Exactly, exactly. I was on a plane once, and it was one one of the few times that the plane did this dip. And it, and, it, and it fell, it hit, it hit what do you call it, a mountain. The, the pilot came on later, but it was a mountain wave. And I guess when the wind comes over the mountain, it, it rushes in front of the plane. So he thought he was low enough, but he wasn't. And he hit this thing and it dropped the plane and people were screaming. It's one of the only time I've ever been on a flight where people were screaming. The cart, the uh, serving cart fell over. The guy next to me, his laptop slid and I grabbed it before it could fall on the ground. I was holding onto the back seat. And after everything leveled out and all of that, the guy next to me I gave him his laptop back and he said to me, boy, when that was going on, you, you looked like you weren't scared. And I said, well, I wasn't because if this plane goes down, I know where I'm going. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. That's the confidence that we need to have in the Lord. See, it's the world that doesn't know Jesus that's always walking around afraid and conspiracy theories and all that. The reason why that happens, they don't know Jesus deeply, intimately, and personally. And it's a focus so, on the temporal instead of on the eternal. Exactly. Keep it and in that's perspective. that's why I think we need that Eucharistic Renaissance and the rise of men. It's drawing our attention, our focus, back to where it needs to be on Jesus. It is interesting. You know, the, the, the saying, memento mori, you know, which is what the monks of the desert uh, this, uh, of North Africa Remember your death. But the, the, the genesis of that was when a Roman uh, general would have their great victory, their triumph into Rome after a great victory. As they were walking through Rome, there would be a slave 
um, or uh, they're probably riding a horse through Rome, but there would be a slave walking behind them just with an earshot, and they would be repeating, as everybody's screaming and hollering how great you are, they'd be repeating the words, memento mori, remember your death. Keep every, keep it in perspective. For some people, remember it. You know, and, and, and these monks of the desert, they would keep a skull. They may only have the Psalms and maybe a gospel that they could read because, you know, copying books was difficult. Um, but many of them kept a skull in their in their in their cave just to remember their death. And when they would gather together to see each other, they may say nothing to each other. Uh, they may have the Eucharist, you know, once a month or something like that, or once a week. They would say memento mori. Remember your death. Live your life as if you're going to die. But for Christians, that's a joyful thing. I was interviewed by Marcus Aubrey. He's the founder of Onnit, one of the great supplement companies, uh, Joe Rogan's company. The UFC fighters all, all are on it. They used to sponsor me, and I was I was on his show, and he, we talked about the seven virtues. and And he's a he's a uh, he's a philosophy. Uh, I think he has his degree in philosophy. And so when I brought up the seven virtues, he goes, I, wait a minute, I thought there was only four, uh, the, the classic cardinal virtues. Um, and I said, no, as a Christian, there's three more, faith, hope, and love. And he goes, hope? You know, I don't believe in hope. Hope is, you should just be able, you got to put confidence in yourself and overcome your challenges with your own determination. But, you, but that doesn't have that Christian perspective of hope of just the eternal, of, of that God is in control. And right now when everybody's so concerned about c conspiracy theories and all of that, it's as if they're neglecting the, the reality of, uh, of, um, of Jesus and that the Holy Spirit, the Holy, the Holy Spirit is, is, uh, is at work. You know, he's, 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 he did, by the way, it was, he, he did, by the way, you know, create the whole universe. <laughs> so That's we need right. to just rest in our hope. Hey, amen. That's right. And, um, you know, you're right. It, 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 the hope is one of those virtues. I think it, it's funny because faith, everybody can understand that love. We get that. But hope, hope is kind of like this uh, ambiguous kind of thing, you know, because we think, oh, I hope this happens. Or I hope that happened. I hope I win the lottery. But our hope in Christ goes much deeper than that, um, because hope gives us confidence. Right. Hope gives us confidence that no matter what happens in this world, that um, that Christ is going to be with us, that the, he said, I will be with you always to the end of the age. And that is what our hope rests in, in the promise of Christ, not in the promise of the world. The beatific, the beatific vision, you know, <clears throat> we hope to see God. Uh, face to face, <clears throat> we're talking with Deacon Harold Burke Service. By the way, let us know if you do win that lottery. We are, we are. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but it it is it is. Uh, I think of it as as coraggio, fortitude, as a fullback grabbing the ball and lowering his helmet and just running over people trying to get to the goal line. But hope is like that wide receiver, you know, that beautiful when they're running and they look back over their shoulder and they reach out with their hands and they're looking up and back and, and that beautiful spiral lands in their hands. The hope looks up. Hope looks up. It, we, we trust in the Lord. Deacon, we already got, we have to go, so I'm going to ask you on air, will you please come back again uh, uh, the next round of, I know you're so busy, but we'd love to have you on our show. Absolutely. There's so much more to talk about. We can talk about the race issue and other things. Oh, and, we didn't even get to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, receiving yes. communion and all the controversy yeah. around it. We can talk about a lot of stuff. But of yeah. course I'd come back. <laughs> well, thank you. We've been talking with Deacon Harold Burke Sivers. I remember the first several times I interviewed you, I just couldn't get your last name. I wanted to pronounce it wrong. You had to always <laughs> yeah. fix it. But it, it actually it right, is, it's pronounced exactly <laughs> the way it looks, but I just didn't yeah, think it could possibly right. be. Uh, th this is the Bear Wazik Adventure. Deacon, where can they find you? Uh, DeaconHerald.com DeaconHerald.com This is the Bear Wazik Adventure. You can find us at DeepAdventure.com We're going to give them that aloha. You know, the word aloha means to give breath, which is what the Holy Spirit, what Jesus said, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. And he breathed his Holy Spirit. So we always end our show with the aloha. So may the breath of the Holy Spirit, will you say it with me? May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha! Man. 
I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.